Right, basically, you know, it was to give myself and Jay an outlet to, to release the other stuff that we're doing on, you know, because mm. there's a lot of good music out there and um, there's a lot of good music comes to us that, yeah. you know, we would like to put out. It wouldn't, wouldn't fit on the Tories final because it's a Harper label, but hence the reason why we started with Tories White. And I know, obviously, you come from, like, a different generation to us, like, in so much Are as... you trying to say I'm an old man? No, not at all. <laughs> <clears throat> but, <laughs> um, like, DJing was kind of a novelty, I guess, when you started. Well, certainly rave music and mixing and stuff was all kind of new, whereas by the time I was old enough to have a crack at it, you know, it's like, yeah, raves, DJs, you know, that's been around for a while. So it was harder, not harder to get noticed, but you were kind of ambassadors for it. What, think... would, what, what would you think is the... The secret. Do you think somebody can just be a DJ these days? Um, I, I don't think you can nowadays. I mean, it's, it's one thing that I hate. Before you used to get you used to get a DJ booking on on your ability as a DJ, on your ability to mix, on your ability to rock a crowd. You know, on mm. your your music choice, etc. Nowadays, more uh, more often than not, that you just get booked because you had a big tune it. And you, you know? don't think there's any way that we can ever go back to a, a no, day no, when no, people are going to be superstars just off the back of how they put other people's work records there's, there's DJs out there nowadays that, you know, they don't even mix anymore. They just play other stuff at the same tempo. They don't mm. even touch the CDJs. It's, n it's, no, it's not so much a culture anywhere close to what it used to be. And do you think that's a bad thing? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you're just pressing start, that's it, you know? Mm. And yeah, I feel, I mean, yeah, it's not cool. And you turn up, and most of the records for most people make are all at the same speed. And I feel like a fraud. I've played sets where I've, you know... Are you two, one of those fraudsters? Two or three tracks, you know, yeah. that are in the, at the same BPM. And you're like, you know, you spend a couple of seconds searching around and you think, oh, well, it's, it's near enough to that. And you knock it on and sure enough, it's the same BPM. And it's like... I mean, I think a lot, works a lot of people still minutes, think you know when you watch a DJ that they're actually DJing, but I think um, as time goes on, people are realising, and lots of people know just now, they just think, well, it's not actually... Done it. And, I mean, lo loads of DJs, and there's nothing wrong with it. And um, play the stuff, nothing but their own stuff from their own label. You yeah. Know? And everybody particularly writes at a, a certain tempo. That's the tempo that they like to write at. But if you're only playing your own music all the time, then yeah. you're playing the same tempo all the time. You know, you, you've got to mix it up. But that's why I like to drop other stuff in, like breaks and mm. you know some proper gabba, a bit of proper hardcore, just mix it up because everything's at a different tempo. Then you have to work to do it. You know. Yeah. And do you think hardcore's going to be affected um, by the sort of economic downturn and stuff at the moment? Obviously, yeah. you're, you're as busy as ever, yeah. and you have been, you know, for years, and, you know, trends seem to come and go, and blah, 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 and other people's bookings go up and then go down, but there's always Mark Smith on the line <laughs> 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 just sort of nestled in there, somewhere near the top. Um, you don't think it's going to be affected? You, don't, you can't see the raves in dying a death like it did? I don't. I mean, I think it, it'll have a, it's, it's peaks and troughs, but I don't think it'll have a trough anything like it did in like the, the late nineties. No. Because I think everyone's everyone's too involved, um, making too much money, and they wouldn't want to see it going the way it went before. You know, because yeah. it's just it, it practically died and never came back. And what do you think? In all seriousness, I mean, it's difficult to talk about things, but you're somebody that quite obviously doesn't do it for the money. Unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, I, don't well, you, I know everybody's, everybody's got to kind of look yeah. at it. You know, from one point, I mean, we'll get, I know he said daft then, but we're not allowed to swear. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets annoyed about digital downloads and this, that and the other, And but, you know, ab above and beyond making ends meet kind of thing and being able to live, you, you're not somebody who kind of seeks to sell out and make music. I'm not trying to, you know, No, no, I, I, I seek to make music, yeah. but I don't, I don't you... seek to sell out to, to make money from the music, you know? No. But sometimes I think, oh, you know, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to write a big cheesy monster and make lots of money but when I sit down to do it the passion's just not there and if the passion's just not there there's no point in me doing it you know mm. and do you think it's going to be a good thing if some of these the people that do adopt that policy sort of drift away from it a little bit as kind of sales fall and no, I don't think it'd be a bad thing I mean there's nothing wrong with the, the commercial aspect you've got to remember that if it wasn't for the commercial stuff probably half the punters that we've got in our scene right now wouldn't be in our scene you know yeah like, oh, I'm not talking about like commercial don't worry, I'm not digging you. Music. <laughs> I mean, you could no. I mean, like you look at someone like Darren Styles, for example. I mean, his stuff is probably the most commercially viable. But then I think he is much as anyone still does it because he loves it. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not saying that necessarily people who make commercial sounding music are the people that are in it. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I can see how it's going to be. Um, how it's going to be interesting if sales start to fall and. You know, obviously, there's not been as many albums this last year as there have been. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, when, when there's not as much money to be made, both certain people hang about, you know, yeah. when they still have the love and the passion and, and get their teeth and bear it and try and work through it kind of thing. Mm. Probably not. Probably a lot of these people, they'll just jump onto a different genre or a genre that they're already involved in on sideline anyway, you know, mm. so... OK, well, on the subject of, um, like, things continuing and new music, um, Darwin's probably your 
Is he the sole person you've got signed to your label? Or? Um, well, yeah, for, for constant supplier stuff, yeah, I would say he's the sole person. He's a very talented boy, he's young Darren. Darren? Darwin, I says. Darwin, yeah. Darwin, Darwin. <laughs> right, okay. I was going to say Darwin, Darwin. Yeah, well, this interview's um, taking a turn for the worst now. I'm kind of running out of things to say. <laughs> I hope it's taking a turn for the worst on your behalf and not mine. Yeah, no, you're, you're, being, you're holding up your end. I'm just sort of like, uh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, right. Dun, so, dun, Darwin. Dun. Dun. Darwin, yeah, you've signed a lot of tracks from him. Um, and you've obviously worked together in the studio quite a lot. Yeah. Which brings me around to our album project, and I know this, it seems like this radio show is sort of designed to kind of push our album and push our artists. No, it's and all, it's all, it's all like, about the brand, yeah. and you might as well you might as well get it in there while you can, mm. you know. So you've just completed a mix, um, not with Nick though on this occasion, with Al Storm. Yeah, that's time. That's time round. That's Al. Yeah. Do you want to tell us how you what you, how you think that's come out? I mean, I know you're quite happy with it. When uh, well, I'm, I'm extremely. I mean, I think um, not dissing any of the other albums in the market, but I think in comparison to some of the other things I've done, it's probably. The, the, the best um, best musical content and probably one of the best mixes I've ever done. The one I did mm. now, you know, it's just really really good mix. And the, and the rest of the album's the same. You know, the music context fantastic. It's not um, not a lot of the same stuff. You know, it's all mixed up really really well. And I think a really interesting mix. You know. Yeah. And can you see yourself um, continuing to do albums? And is that something that you always want to go down? Or yeah, as long as I don't I don't I mean I don't do loads and loads and loads of albums, but I mean I do enjoy doing them. I I'll, I'll continue to do them, but. Um, I won't uh, do them every day of the week, if you know what I mean, because mm. the music will suffer then. Okay, um, I'm really, really struggling to think You're of what else to ask. <laughs> <laughs> we should have done a bit more preparation. We should explain that you, you know, you're in the studio today. Yeah, I've been quite busy today, folks. You have to excuse this fact. And we did think potentially that we could put off doing this because the football was on. Yeah. <laughs> and sort of say, oh, you know, it'll be better to wait until ten o'clock. But, but the powers that be said no. No. So, craftyradio.com. Um, you're live listening to Mark Smith. There's there's no retakes. Hello. Hello. Um, so what sort of messages have you got for people out there who would who would kind of say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, <laughs> you're kind of waiting for your tea as well aren't you yeah that's a Scottish word messages like groceries but you say messages and you see what messages you got we've got a bag of messages at our feet waiting to be eaten you know uh, <laughs> right, got, yeah. I don't understand that's a Scottishness that. that's <laughs> <laughs> so come on then Mark help me out here um, what else can we talk about Um We've yeah. covered Notorious. No, you've well, you just actually had a release. We'll go on about that, Building Shaker. Yeah, um, that's Mine and Gamma's uh, Notorious 6. Mm -hmm. um, Notorious number 7 will be Darwin, Obi and Mystery. It'll be Hitchhike Thunder, Darwin's uh, Epic Floor Damage and Craze by Darwin and Obi, which is a really, really good release. And are you going to be looking to sort of step step the releases up a little bit? Uh, yeah, well, I have done this year. I mean, basically, there's been a lot of problems. Probably a lot of people think I'm full of BS, you know, but mm. um, there was changing distributors, problems with the distributors, then major problems with the printers, but that's all been ironed out now. So six is out, seven's ready to go out, eight's ready to go out, nine's ready to go out, working on a special ten, yeah. um, which hopefully should be out by ten. It's really important that I get this one done for ten because it's going to be a kind of special yeah. release. 